Hello, everybody. Welcome to part five of the Hathor material. I'm really enjoying this um, this book. I hope you guys are too. And I still have not listened to Tom Kenyon CDs that came with the books. So if you've listened to them, let me know down in the comment section below what you think of these CDs. And last week we spoke about something interesting, which was that the idea of the human physical body has to be at a certain level of physical fitness in order to be hand in order to handle the high vibration that's coming into the body, which absolutely makes sense to me because that's what we're doing in yoga too. We're bringing the body to peak physical fit fitness to be able to hold the vibration, which again is common sense. And there is another book by Gopi Krishna, which where he also spoke, speaks about this. So later on, I am going to go deeper into that exploration of physical fitness and spiritual enlightenment. But for today, we're starting with chapter seven, which is stabilizing in chaos. Once again, if you have missed parts one through four, they will be down in the description box below. All right, chapter seven, stabilizing in chaos. Your earth is passing through a monumental and historic time, a time in which energies are fluctuating at rates heretofore never experienced by humanity. This has to do with the passage to a new vibration. And as earth moves from the old into the new, she is moving from an old way of organizing herself into a new way of organizing herself. And this is what's also spoken about in the law of one. For those of you who are familiar with the law of one, they speak about how planet Earth is third density and soon planet Earth will be ascending to fourth density. Now, the only thing, the only difference is in third density, we're a planet of polarity, whereas we go into fourth density, we're either going positive or negative. And so that's why there's such a battle right now on the Earth. It's which path is Earth going to go? Is Earth going to go positive for the light or negative for the dark? It's going to ascend. We just don't know which path it's going to ascend to yet. Earth is a conscious living being and all human beings must respond to the fluctuation that is occurring as the earth moves upward in her own evolution. You are riding upon earth's evolutionary thrust upward, so to speak, and you have chosen to be here at this time so that you could experience these unprecedented changes. Many of these changes are chaotic in nature and especially challenging to your emotional body. Consequently, many of you are experiencing greater emotion vol emotional volatility at the surface of awareness than ever before. This is likely to continue for some time as Earth moves through the, this transition phase of chaos into a new order. And I don't like the word new order that they used here, but I think they know what, what we what, we know what they mean. They're talking about the positive, right? We're either going into the new world order or we're going into the new earth. Whenever any system moves from a, one level of order to a higher level, there is a period of chaos in which perturbation or disturbances are on the increase. Friction. Friction. We speak about friction a lot on this channel. Friction is necessary. Again, if you have a match. A match has everything in it to light itself, although it can't light itself unless it runs up against the matchbook, which is the friction the light needs to ignite itself. Without the disturbances, without the chaos, there wouldn't be that friction needed to evolve and to ascend. This is now occurring on your planet so that all levels, for example, atomic, molecular, biological, geographical, social, economic, etc., are in states of flux or change. Of course, your own inner reality is affected too, especially your own emotional responses to people and things around you. There are many ways to move into a greater mastery of your emotions during these chaotic times. And we would share with you one particular approach or value. We view you, as we mentioned previously, as multidimensional energy systems. Therefore, what we would share with you is a method to help you deal with your own energy in such a way that your emotional body becomes more stable through this period of tremendous transition as described earlier, this method involves moving awareness into your pranic tube, the central column that extends from above your head through the central part of the body down into the earth. If, for example, you find yourself in a difficult situation emotionally, then the immediate shift of your awareness into the pranic tube will greatly help. This shift allows prana to move the pranic tube more freely, changing your breath in a way that allows a greater movement or life force. You will find the emotional body becoming more stable 
and from a place of emotional centeredness. You will be able to make better choices for yourself in those in difficult moments. Now we would like to take you through a small series of explorations as we have done previously to increase your self-mastery, self-control, and understanding. Exploration number three. Imagine a tube of light, an energy conduit, extending down through the center of your body all the way to the center of the earth. In your imagination, allow that tube of light to move upward above your head as far into space as is appropriate for you at this time. Some of you will experience your pranic tube going only a short distance above your head, and some of you may experience it going further into space. How far it goes above your head does not matter. The distance will be appropriate for you at this time. With this accomplished, move your awareness into your heart center and breathe with your awareness focused on your heart chakra. As you focus on your heart, imagine and sense celestial energies coming down from above and terrestrial energies coming up from the earth below so that, so that these two meet in your heart. Let these two energies flow into your heart chakra from above and from below, feeding the heart continuously in a combined stream. Whether you are inhaling or exhaling, whether you are pausing your breath or not. Just experience the continual flow of prana moving downward and upward. The goal of this exercise is to get a clearer sense of this flow of prana flowing into your heart chakra from both the earth and the sky. This takes a few minutes to get a very clear sense of this flow of prana. This is the first part of the exercise. And they do have a diagram here, diagram eight, balancing emotional energies by connecting heaven to earth through the pranic tube. This allows the individual to self-ground through emotional states to make emotional states easier to manage. You guys can see that. The second part of this exercise adds an additional step. With your awareness in your heart chakra and with the flow of prana coming down from above and up from the earth, simultaneously allow your awareness to be on your breath. Now, please notice when you inhale and then when you exhale and also when you pause in between breaths. As you become aware of your breath, also be aware of the flow of prana moving downward into your heart center as well as upward into your heart center. Whether you are breathing or pausing, Notice that the pranic flow is continuous. While experiencing the continuous flow of prana into your heart chakra, again, become attuned to the rhythm of your inhalation and your exhalation so that you have a sense of two separate flows. Notice the flow of your breath, which pauses between both the inhales and the exhales, and the flow of prana through the pranic tube, which is continuous and does not pause with the breaths. Do this for a few minutes, getting a clearer sense of the rhythm of the breath and also a clear sense of the continuous flow of prana through the pranic tube into your heart chakra. After you have moved through this phase of exploration, get a clear sense of the continual flow of prana into your heart chakra from above and below while simultaneously noticing your breath. Observe that you are experiencing or sensing two vital activities, the rhythm of your breath for one, and the continuous flow of prana through your pranic tube for another. This achievement empowers you to add the third portion of the exercise, which is used, which uses the continual flow of prana while you go through the three different breathing patterns. One is a very rapid breathing pattern. One is a very shallow breathing pattern. And the third merely requires holding the breath. Perhaps you didn't know it, but these are the three primary breathing patterns that the breath goes through as you transit through different emotions. As you master holding a continuous flow of prana so that it is unaffected by the three different breathing patterns, you will be moving towards greater emotional stability. Now, bring prana down from above your head into your heart chakra and then fill up from the earth into your heart chakra as you breathe very fast breaths called kumbhaka breathing in, in yoga. Very fast, rapid breaths. Then take slow breaths as you bring down from above your head into your heart chakra and then up from the earth into your heart chakra. Then hold your breath as you bring prana down from above your head into your heart chakra and then up from the earth into your heart chakra. Get a clear sense of continuous flow of prana regardless of which phase your breathing is in. Either fast, slow, or holding your breath. Now resume normal breathing. 
Again, take a minute or two to practice these, bre these three breath phases. As you work with this exercise, you will discover that prana can freely flow regardless of what breathing pattern you are in. This will allow you to become better stabilized regardless of the breathing pattern or emotional pattern in which you find yourself. These three steps are your training ground for handling unexpected emergencies and emotional chaotic circumstances wherever they may occur. When you can feel comfortable with these three phases, you can add one more critical step. This next portion of the exploration will show you how to shift your focus into the pranic tube and ground it into the earth at a moment's notice. Move your awareness into the pranic tube of your body. And with your imagination, extend the tube all the way down into the center of the earth. With the sense that your pranic tube is anchored into the center of the earth, allow the celestial prana above your head to move downward into your heart chakra and simultaneously allow terrestrial prana to move upward from the earth into your heart chakra. There is nothing else you need to do. You do not make it happen. You simply allow it to happen. The prana immediately flows according to your intention. Your intention is what is critical here. The intention of holding the pranic tube anchored in the core of the earth and allowing the earth energies to move up into your heart chakra simultaneously as the celestial energies move down into your heart center stabilizes your emotions. Again, we recommend practicing this for a minute or two at a time. Chapter 8, The Sacred Elements we view the earth very differently than most humans in Western culture. Our view is closer to that of the ancients and your indigenous people. From our understanding, you are part of the mystery, the all that is. It is central to everything. The force and intelligence of creation moves through and is present in the smallest particle of matter. From this perspective, the entire physical universe is sacred space. It is a hollowed temple. Many people are presently cut off from or have disconnected themselves from an awareness of earth as a sacred space and even more so from awareness of the classical four sacred elements of antiquity. Accessing subtler realms of consciousness allows you to enter the archetypal dominion in which the sacredness of matter, the earth, and the four sacred elements become self-apparent. This archetypal domain to which we refer is not the same as described by your Swiss psychiatrist Carl Jung, Rather, our arch archetypal reference denotes a primordial force that extends through what we call the underworld of matter. This is analogs to the sub-quantum realm, a theoretical place where consciousness continually recreates matter. The four sacred elements are part of this ever-continuing process. In our world, we have sounds for each of these four sacred elements. El is earth, Ka is fired, Lim is water, and Om is both air and space. These four constitute a vibrational continuum. It is possible to chant the sounds of these elements and enter the archetypal realms in which they exist. It is as if these sounds open the doors of perception and allow you to move into a resonant field of consciousness. The archetypal realm, the primordial force, the underworld of matter where the elements are alive. Indeed, entering to a realm and staying there for, for a while enables you to shift consciousness and perception in such a way that you sense the profundity of physical world and also its place within the continuum of consciousness. This is a very powerful practice. Basically, you chant the mantra El Ka Li Om no less than four times and always in groups of four. So you would chant it four times at least. Then you might chant it 16 times and so forth. It is very powerful practice, and we often encourage the chant be done 256 times or 4 to the 4th power. This gives your consciousness time to settle in to and to shift through its various states so it can enter the archetypal realm of elements. There you perceive directly the aliveness and the continuum of consciousness that expresses itself through the earth plane. It is very powerful to practice this chant outdoors where you can sense the elements directly. It is also a powerful practice to place your awareness within your pranic tube, the middle column, shashumna of your spine, that extends down to the middle of your body. By holding your awareness in that pranic tube and chanting the sounds of the elements, you can actually cause the prana that moves within the tube to become rare field, to become enlived by the sounds, and to activate an awakening of the elements within your own body. 
It is something that must be experienced directly rather than talked about. Another thing to understand about this chant is that the material from the unconscious very often begins to rise up. Becoming consciousness often settles into a very deep and profound state when doing the chant for extended periods of time. You can experience every state of consciousness, every state of awareness from absolute boredom and fatigue to high states of ecstasy and bliss, including awarenesses of your own demons, your own negative emotional material. All of this can be activated as you chant this chant. So it is important to understand that whatever arises while you are chanting is part of the clearing. Yes, we've been talking about that, especially with the 30 day challenge that a lot of people when they're doing the, the 15 minute all meditation, things were coming up. That's part of it. It's part of the clearing. It's part of it. And I'm actually going to start tomorrow doing the Kali Om, the El Kali Om chant 256 times. I'm going to do it after my practice. Let's see. Right. Let's see what happens. By chanting a chant El Kali Om, you are acknowledging a sacredness of elements, acknowledging a continuum of consciousness from the source through its various subtle levels all the way into the earth itself. And you are affirming and acknowledging the earth is sacred. Your body is sacred and your place in the continuum of consciousness and the all that is as sacred. It has been said that the human body is the temple of God. And we agree that your body is a sacred temple, for it is the space in which the four sacred elements of earth, fire, water, air, space often offer themselves to you in service. Yes, your body is the Shakti, the expression of the soul. We see earth as a sacred space, an out picture of the sacred elements of the archetypal realm of consciousness itself. We see earth as a being as close to the source as any other realm of existence for the continuum of consciousness and matter is one whole, the law of one. Is it possible to be in deep communion with the divine, to feel completely at home in consciousness and still be embodied? It is not necessary to leave the earth in order to go home. For home is a state of consciousness, a state of connectedness generated from within yourself. I mean, even Yahshua said that, right? Behold, the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of hell is inside of you. We see dangerous situations upon the earth at this time, especially in high technological development developed countries. The situation is the separate from nature and the elements. Modern culture has isolated itself and insulated itself from the natural elements, the natural world. Western society has taken the biblical inscription to have dominion over nature to irresponsible heights. Humanity is oppressing nature. Humankind in the modern world is not only oppressing nature and the elements, but is seriously separated from them as a result has lost much of its connection to the higher continuum of consciousness. When you are in nature, when you have a relationship to the elements, you are closer to the continuum of consciousness that leads to the archetypal realm. And from there, it is just one step into the all that is. Whether the culture of the modern world will awaken to this and reverse its position is unclear. That's what's scary. We don't know whether we're going dark or light. But as far as your individual consciousness is concerned, you can always form a relationship with the elements. You can form the linkage from your own awareness into the archetypal realm of the elements. Many indigenous people can do this. We recommend that you frequently enter nature and spend time with the natural elements for they are the out picturing of the archetypal patterns. Don't insulate yourself from the elements. Embrace them. Appreciate them. Allow your awareness and consciousness to become attuned to the four sacred elements. Chant the name of the elements in the state of reverence and appreciation. And an inner world will open up to you far beyond your imagination. As you enter this archetypal world of elements, you will find a place where you are more deeply connected to the natural world around you. And you will see the world with new eyes. Chapter 9. The fulcrum point. A fulcrum is the balance point of a seesaw or a teeter-totter, often seen in parks. Two children sit at the opposite ends of a narrow board that is supported in the center, the fulcrum. The children take turns pushing up and off the ground, forcing the other end of the seesaw and the child to move down towards the ground. The fulcrum point is the point at which the seesaw board pivots. As long as there is movement, there is a force of polarities, up and down movement on the fulcrum point. This is a beautiful metaphor for consciousness itself since, as the consciousness moves into duality from its still point of non-duality, 
opposite forces come into play. As with the seesaw in your world of polarity, when something moves up, something else mo must move down and so on. In your current life as a human being on this planet, you experience a rapid acceleration of many multidimensional forces, physical, mental, emotional, cultural, social, spiritual, global, and many of these are happening simultaneously. The fulcrum point for you as a human being is where these multidimensional forces interconnect in the present moment. If you've ever sat on a seesaw, you know that there is a possibility of a balance point in which the opposite ends of the seesaw are parallel to the ground and there is no movement. The movement is a perfect balance of dualities. The fulcrum point is the neutral state. However, when the dualities begin to move, for example, when one end moves up while the other end moves down, the fulcrum point experiences an, an increase of activity and friction. You as a human being experience that friction as an increase of pressure through your emotional or feeling nature so that as events intensify, your feelings also intensify in the present moment. The point around you which these feelings intensify is your fulcrum point. This is the initiatory portal. This is a doorway to your soul's accelerated evolution and ascended awareness. Everybody who's doing the shadow work challenge with exercise and everything is, I think, really starting to learn the value in the friction, right? How do you deal with your experience is your choice as the individual. Yet if you fail to see your life in this planet as a sacred space, fail to see this life as an inventory process, then you may go into blame, discounting, or avoidance. Escapism. There are many ways to avoid the present moments of your life. However, if you align with the understanding that the events and experiences of your life are your initiatory process, then you will hold sacred whatever is, is occurring, even when it's difficult. The initiatory process is essentially strewn with difficulties, tests, and trials, for this is how the soul grows. Mastery over a particular level or dominion of self brings mastery to the soul. Fundamentally, you are working through the emotional, mental, and spiritual contents of your own consciousness. And this experience through the events of your life, specifically the thoughts, feelings, and emotion that these events trigger within you. If you honor your fulcrum point in the present moment as a focal point of your life, then you are prepared to move into a different relationship with your experience. Honor your experience and feeling responses so they are the meaning, context, and purpose of your life. From our understanding, there is another element that needs to be added, and that is the mastery of your energy. You may have noticed that when your emotional reactions are strong or when things occur that are overwhelming, you are less able to deal efficiently with them, less able to cope and make the right choices for yourself, and less able to use that opportunity as fuel for transformation of your own consciousness. When people in enter into moments of intense overwhelm, Thus slipping into unconsciousness, they often attempt to avoid awareness of the present moment, the fulcrum point of their experience, by, drift, by drifting, sleeping, overworking, or avoiding the whole thing in some other way, such as drug, food, or alcohol. For some of you, even meditation can be a subtle form of avoidance. Absolutely, we're going to talk about that eventually. You should only be meditating for like 15 minutes. Anything over 15 minutes is, is borderline into avoidance and escapism and call psychosis. So we are gonna be speaking about that in a future episode. The tools that we share in this material are meant to help you master your energy so that when you enter into the fulcrum or pivotal experience and the intensity of the moment increases, you have the energy mastery to align yourself positively. You will have both the awareness of what is happening and the mastery of your energy to make correct choices for yourself in that moment. These two aspects together create a powerful vortex that allows you to flow quickly into higher levels of consciousness. Both must be in place, however. You must understand, appreciate, and honor your life experience. Then you must use your feeling responses in the initiatory process to achieve the energy mastery that stabilizes and allows you to take advantage of these growth opportunities. It is ironic and paradoxical that consciousness can create either a heaven or a hell around the same event. Let me read that again. It is ironic and paradoxical that consciousness can create either a heaven or a hell around the same event. The event didn't change. Your perception is what changes. Your consciousness. 
The reactions that you experience in response to different events actually may have very little to do with the events themselves. This is the initiatory awareness, understanding that whatever occurs, you are creating your own feelings and emotional responses, and only you are responsible for them. There are emotional states you tend to experience as hellish, a kind of purgatory, where you are tormented by the demons of your own attachments, as well as fear, pain, anger, and sadness. And there are emotional states where you feel content, centered, loved, and fulfilled. Simply recognize that these two polar states, heaven and hell, are within you, within your own consciousness, within your own being. They are not located physically in space anywhere. They are within you. They are polar opposites that work and move and pulsate from one to another. The fulcrum point of your life experience is that edge on which they teeter. As you acquire this understanding and master your energy flow, you will be better able to balance the polarities within yourself. Taking the metaphor of the falcon point even deeper, we would say that events themselves are essentially empty. They are triggers, however, that generate responses from within you or your consciousness. It's correct. So something is either bad or good, a bad or good situation, depending on how you react to it. It's bad or good. Karma is just karma. It's just action or reaction. It's empty. You're the one that puts the label on it as being bad or good by your conscious emotions and feelings, your triggers. So what they're saying is true. The event itself is empty. That's why the story doesn't matter. It doesn't matter why you feel a certain way because that that event is empty how you feel and how you react it is what matters everything's within as you go through the initiatory process of your life you will have feelings or emotional responses to innumerable and often challenging things this is your nature as a human but if you experience these emotional feeling responses with awareness and self-compassion looking lovingly within yourself so to speak you will find the polarities within your own being that are creating your suffering these polarities are ruled by your beliefs and choices from the deepest levels of your own consciousness. The purpose and nature of initiation is to provide a mirror to reflect back to the soul so that it can clearly see and understand the choices it has made. The initiatory process of your life that you are living today and the people in the situations you encounter are all holding a mirror for you. Consequently, when you experience something difficult, if you do not look at what you are feeling in response to the event, you will miss a tremendous opening of greater awareness and clarity. This is the power of the fulcrum point. It is a sacred moment. Every moment of your experience is sacred. And when you find yourself in situations that are difficult and challenging, know that you have entered another initiatory opportunity. This makes it a time for rejoicing, a time for awareness, clarity, and self-compassion. As you master the tools that we have given and will continue to give, your energy body will align in such a way that you will be able to take advantage of these initiatory experiences in a constructive and creative manner. We would now like to share a story, a legend, and we have in our own culture rule concerning one human living in an earlier historical period you call ancient Egypt. In a way, this story symbolizes the current human experience on earth. There was an initiate who came to the temple of Hathor, the fertility goddess of love and joy, desperately wanting to experience these states of being. But he wanted to enter the initiatory process at the highest level without going to the lower temples of the understanding. Each time the hopeful initiate would come to the Hathor temple of love and joy, he would be sent away with the commandment. You are not ready. You must enter the underworld. This person being very crafty used various disguises to present himself as a woman, a crippled man, a beggar, and even a sage. Yet he was still the same person and was sit away. Still, he returned time and time again to the temple of Hathor, wanting and seeking initiation into the mysteries, but without the willingness to go through the lower temples first. Every time he appeared in disguise, he was sent back to the underworld, which he refused to enter to begin the initiation process, which would have eventually earned him his heart's desire. The point of this tale is that you cannot bypass your own underworld. Let me read that again. You cannot bypass your own underworld. You must go down into the catacombs of your own unconsciousness before seeking the higher spiritual mysteries. You see, the higher you go into consciousness, the deeper you must delve into remain in balance. If you go too high in consciousness without balancing your hidden depths, including your own unconsciousness, then you are unbalanced and potentially dangerous. Why? Because then you are acting without awareness of the crucial parts of yourself that are in your own underworld. These aspects that are not evolved, such as your anger, 
your hatred, your jealousy, your rage, your fantasies, even your death wishes. These things that you try to keep out of awareness are part of your human nature. And your task as a human being is to integrate and to heal all levels of your experience in this dimension. One of the levels of this experience of life on earth, which must be healed, has to do with what you call darkness, which we call unawareness. The darkness is unawareness. The task of evolution, as we see it, is to expand awareness so that it is all encompassing and becomes incorporated into all of your beingness. The process, the circumstances, and events that are all occurring on your planet at this time are of such an intense nature that they are activators for feelings and belief that live in your underworld. The fulcrum point of experience, the intimacy of the moment by moment experience of life is the initiatory portal allowing you to move into awareness and understanding of the depths of yourself. Never doubt that your nature is profoundly capable of this task. For your consciousness includes the light, the celestial realms of your own being, and the dark demonic worlds of your own being as well, as all the realms in between these two extreme polarities. To hold these two polarities in compassion, consciousness, and love is to balance them and to heal your own darkness through both the power and the light of your awareness. This is the task of evolution as we see it for this level and your dimension.